Hey everyone, this lesson is on an overview of the human coronaviruses. So we're gonna talk about each of the coronaviruses in detail. We're also gonna talk about when they were discovered, the signs and symptoms each of them causes. And we're also gonna talk about some of the newer coronaviruses, including SARS-CoV-2. So coronavirus, the word coronavirus, if we were to break it down, the prefix corona comes from the Latin word meaning crown. And this is all related to the crown-like appearance of viruses when we look at them under a microscope. So if you can see here, these are spike proteins on the virus. And when we look at them under a microscope, it looks like a crown. That's why they are called coronaviruses. So coronaviruses themselves come from the order Nidovirales, and they're in the family of viruses known as coronaviridae. So the coronaviruses themselves are medium-sized viruses they are enveloped and they are positive sense single-stranded RNA viruses. So if you were to look inside the virus, they actually have one single strand of RNA as their genetic code. They actually have a very large viral RNA genome. They actually have some of the largest RNA genome known. So there are actually four genus or four genera of coronaviruses. The first one is alpha coronaviruses. The second one is beta coronaviruses. The third is gamma coronaviruses, and the fourth is delta coronaviruses. These are the four genera of human coronaviruses, so four types, you can think of it that way. So the alpha and beta genus are where all of the human coronaviruses reside. So there are actually seven coronaviruses that cause disease in humans, and we're going to talk about all seven in this lesson. And four of these coronaviruses have HCOV in their name. HCOV comes from human coronavirus. That is what HCOV means. So we're gonna first talk about the alpha coronaviruses. There are two alpha coronaviruses that cause illness in humans. The first one we're gonna talk about is HCOV229E. HCOV229E was discovered in the mid 1960s. And this coronavirus is more likely to infect immunocompromised patients and is less symptomatic or less severe than other coronaviruses. So this one is less likely to present clinically. The second alpha coronavirus that affects humans is HCOV or human coronavirus NL63. This one was discovered in 2003. It's actually discovered in a laboratory in the Netherlands. That's why we see NL in its name, Netherlands NL. It is actually the second most common coronavirus. So we're going to talk about the most common coronavirus in the next slide, but this is actually the second most common coronavirus that infects humans. And this coronavirus is associated with croup in children. Both of these coronaviruses have a worldwide distribution. Wherever researchers have looked, they have found these viruses. They are everywhere. They are ubiquitous. And they have a seasonality. So like a lot of respiratory viruses, they fluctuate throughout the year with highest amount of cases in the winter and lowest amount of cases in the summer. These alpha coronaviruses cause the common cold or acute rhinitis. So acute rhinitis, you can think of nasal congestion, so your stuffy nose, they cause sneezing, and they cause rhinorrhea, so a runny nose. So these two coronaviruses cause significant amounts of common cold or acute rhinitis. They can actually cause significant lower respiratory tract infections like pneumonia or bronchiolitis. And they can also be a cause of an acute exacerbation of COPD. There are certain patients that are more at risk of having a severe or more severe presentation due to infection of these viruses. Some of these include young children, older adults, and immunocompromised. So extremes of age and individuals with a lower immune system. And the third set of symptoms that these alpha coronaviruses cause are gastrointestinal infections or gastrointestinal symptoms. Some of these include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. These may be a cause of some acute viral gastroenteritis. It's still not entirely clear though. There has been research done showing that individuals with respiratory tract symptoms like nasal congestion, they may have some diarrhea, and when they actually check the stool of that individual, they may find some of these coronaviruses, but it's still not known if the coronavirus is causing these symptoms or if they are a copathogen to some other virus that is actually causing these symptoms. So there's still some evidence or some research to be done in this area to determine are they the main or primary contributor to some gastrointestinal infections. 
The next group that we're going to talk about are the beta coronaviruses. The beta coronaviruses actually have three lineages, lineage A, B, and C. The first lineage we're going to talk about is lineage A. So in the lineage A, there are actually two beta coronaviruses that cause disease in humans. The first one is human coronavirus OC43. So this virus was actually discovered in 1967, and it was discovered in a laboratory in Maryland, United States. This is actually the most common strain of the coronaviruses. So you can remember OC overly common. This is the most common strain of coronavirus to cause infection in humans. And for whatever reason, this coronavirus is more likely to cause the most severe presentations among the HCOV strains. So not amongst the SARS and SARS-CoV-2 strains, but amongst these HCOV strains we're talking about right now, this one is more likely to cause a severe presentation or a more severe disease. And the second coronavirus in lineage A of the beta coronaviruses is HCOV HKU1. This virus was discovered in 2005 in a laboratory in Hong Kong. That's where its name comes from, HK. You can think of Hong Kong. And this virus is actually associated with febrile seizures, particularly in children. So both of these viruses also have a worldwide distribution. They are everywhere, like those other two alpha coronaviruses we talked about before. Wherever researchers look, they find these viruses. They are all over the place in the world, and they come and go, and they fluctuate throughout the year. Again, both of these beta coronaviruses cause the common cold, like we talked about before. They also cause lower respiratory tract infections, like we talked about before. And they also cause gastrointestinal symptoms or are associated with gastrointestinal symptoms or infections. And with regards to lower respiratory tract infections, HCOV OC43 causes the most severe disease, the most severe lower respiratory tract infections. And unfortunately, it's actually the most common strain as well. So this coronavirus can actually cause significant lower respiratory tract infections in some individuals. Out of these four coronaviruses, the HCOV coronaviruses we just talked about, these are considered the community-acquired coronaviruses. They are all over the world, and they fluctuate throughout the year. They have a seasonality. These are actually estimated to cause about 5 to 15% of all common colds or all acute rhinitis. So they are significant pathogens in humans. And some other considerations with these coronaviruses is that they often occur as copathogens. Copathogens means that they occur with another virus, so another virus that tags along. And most often, it's usually a respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. RSV is also known to cause a lot of lower respiratory tract infections as well. So both of these can essentially combine their efforts to infect an individual. The other beta coronaviruses are in lineage B and lineage C. There are actually two coronaviruses in lineage B of the beta coronaviruses that cause disease in humans. The first one is SARS-CoV or SARS coronavirus. This coronavirus was officially discovered in 2003 but likely started in 2002. And it seems to have originated in the Guangdong province of China. With concerted efforts of the global community, this coronavirus was actually expelled from the human population in July of 2003. So it had an outbreak from February of 2003 to July of 2003. So what is believed to have happened here is that the virus seems to have spread from a bat to a civet, so this animal here, and the virus then spread from a civet to a human. This virus causes the condition known as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. And this condition, the majority of the time, has severe symptoms. And the most common symptoms with regards to this infection is fever, cough, chills, and myalgias, or sore, achy muscles. And it can ultimately lead to Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, which can lead to fatality. And the basic reproduction number of SARS-CoV is anywhere from 0.7 to 3. So the basic reproduction number is the number of people one infected individual can infect themselves. So if one individual has SARS-CoV and they're infected, and if the basic reproduction number is 3, they can spread the virus to three other people. So that is the basic reproduction number. So what it was found at the beginning was that the basic reproduction number was 3, but after concerted effort to essentially isolate 
and treat individuals and track down individuals who were exposed, they brought this basic reproduction number down to 0.7. Once the basic reproduction number is below one, the virus will essentially die out because you can imagine one individual is infecting less than one person ahead of them. So they're going to have decreased numbers as time goes on. Ultimately though, this was considered a very fatal condition. More than 8,000 cases of SARS were confirmed with confirmed 774 deaths with a fatality rate of approximately 9.6%. The second coronavirus in lineage B of the beta coronaviruses is SARS-CoV-2 or SARS coronavirus 2. It was discovered in late 2019 in Wuhan, Hubei, China. And in early 2020, we have seen a worldwide pandemic starting in February to March of 2020. So what is believed to have happened here is that similar to SARS coronavirus or SARS-CoV, this SARS-CoV-2 was transmitted from a bat to a pangolin and then to a human. This virus causes the disease known as coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19. What is interesting and what is troubling about infection with this virus is that individuals that are infected with this virus can be anything from asymptomatic, so they have no symptoms at all, up to severe and fatal. When they do have symptoms, the most common symptoms are a fever, cough, and dyspnea, or shortness of breath. And this can progress to ARDS, or acute respiratory distress syndrome, and fatality as well. And it's still early on in researching this virus, but what is believed is that the basic reproduction number is anywhere between two to three. Some numbers have been quoted as 2.2, but it seems to be in two to three range. So one individual with SARS-CoV-2 can spread this virus to two to three people. And the more troubling part of this is that they can be asymptomatic and be spreading this virus as well. Right now, as of the recording of this lesson, there are more than 1.3 million cases of this condition with approximately 75,000 deaths. Now, officially, the fatality rate has been quoted to be anywhere from 1% to 3%, but we'll continue to keep an eye on this to see if these fatality rate numbers change. And the last virus is in lineage C of the beta coronaviruses. This is the MERS coronavirus, or the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus. This virus was discovered in 2012 in Saudi Arabia, and it really hasn't gained a whole lot of traction in the world, fortunately. Really, it's only been localized to Saudi Arabia, and there was an outbreak in South Korea as well. This is believed to come from camels, so individuals, particularly drinking camel milk, can be exposed to this virus. And this virus causes the condition known as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS. So this condition is very similar to SARS coronavirus 2 infections. It can be anywhere from asymptomatic to severe and fatal. When it is symptomatic, it has a fever, cough, and dyspnea. So dyspnea meaning shortness of breath. So again, symptoms very similar to the SARS-CoV-2, but it can also have severe pneumonia AKI or acute kidney injury, and it can also progress to ARDS as well and fatality. So there's a couple of small points. Acute kidney injury seems to be more common with MERS COV as opposed to SARS COV2, at least from our evidence right now. So you might be wondering with the similarities to SARS COV2, why is MERS COV not spreading as much as SARS COV2 is? Well, fortunately, the basic reproduction number of MERS COV is actually very low. It's actually quoted to be 0.3 to 0.8. So remember that I said if the basic reproduction number is less than one, this virus will basically die out because one individual is only infecting maybe a third of individuals that come into contact with that individual. So it doesn't spread. It'll actually eventually die out. So as of this moment, this virus is still in the world. It has more than 2,400 cases that have been confirmed and confirmed 858 deaths. So the fatality rate is approximately 34.4%, very high fatality rate. So these are the lineage B and lineage C beta coronaviruses. They all are actually very similar in that they are zoonoses, so they have come from an animal and they cause similar symptoms. But the basic reproduction number and the severity of each has differed. With regards to SARS-CoV, it seems that perhaps the reason why the world was able to extinguish this virus is because it was so severe. Individuals who were exposed 
almost always had severe presentation, so it was more easily identified and stopped. Whereas these other two, SARS-CoV-2 and MERS-CoV, can have asymptomatic cases. With regards to SARS-CoV-2, it has asymptomatic cases and a reproduction number of two to three, allowing it to spread. Whereas MERS-CoV has asymptomatic cases as well, but has a very low basic reproduction number, allowing it to essentially die out and not spread like SARS-CoV-2 has. So I hope you found this lesson informative and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, continue to live, laugh, and learn. And I hope to see you next time.